Hello everyone, my name is Jim Bashirs. I am a field applications engineer here at Pepperell and Fuchs in the USA and the CTSS for inductive, capacitive, and magnetic sensors for the Americas. In this video, we will be learning about Pepperell and Fuchs' unique two-in-one technology. As always, if you have any questions, you can contact me or one of our technical support specialists for help. So let's go ahead and begin. Okay, we're going to discuss Pepperell and Fuchs' unique 2-in-1 technology and some of the points we are going to go over are what it is exactly and how it works and what kind of hardware you need to operate it. It's going to include the 2-in-1 device and any of the sensor adapters if you need that. And we'll talk a little bit about how we can use the technology, where we can use it what kind of applications you need to look for, that kind of thing. So what exactly is 2 to 1? Well, simply put, 2 to 1 allows connection of two field devices using a single two conductor cable. And this is a patented technology developed by engineers here at Pepperell and Fuchs. And this is an ideal device to use for areas where two sensors are contained in one device like valve sensors, if you have level control, float trees, any kind of pressure switch devices, that kind of thing. The way 2 to 1 works is the system uses a special intrinsic safety barrier with diode blocking devices like a 2 to 1 equipped Nemours sensor or a Nemours sensor or dry contact connected to a diode adapter device. While a traditional wiring method would require a dual sensor application to use two wires for each sensor or dry contact, kind of like what we show here in the picture, this barrier allows just two wires for the entire sensor or contact assembly. Here you can kind of see we are showing a positioning application with two sensors detecting a flag on the piston. In this instance, four sensors can be monitored with one barrier and two two-wire cables. Without the two-to-one, either two two-channel or four single-channel barriers would be required. Okay, continuing on with how the system works. With two-to-one, a single two-wire cable transmits the status of two devices to the two-to-one intrinsic safety barrier. In this example, one of Pepperell and Fuchs's dual sensor valve position devices and a target is connected to the 2 to 1 intrinsic safety barrier with just two wires. Switching input on the barrier determines the state of the inputs and we will show how that works on the next slide. And this reduces cabling by 50%. So what type of input devices can be used with 2 to 1? Well, we can have special Nemours sensors with 2-in-1 technology built in, or regular Nemours sensors connected to a diode blocking sensor adapter that we'll talk about a little bit later. You can have dry contact devices. You can uh, connect those via that blocking relay adapter. And you can also disable the 2-in-1 technology and wire inputs just like they would typically be done on a barrier. So let's continue on with how the system works. Uh, the system uses a unique 50 hertz input switching process to determine the status of the inputs. So a typical wiring method without 2 to 1 wires the Nemours sensor or dry contact directly to the barrier. And we can show that here in the two uh, diagrams for sensor 1 and 2 going into a typical barrier with uh, two inputs on it. So that's pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and move on. Okay, let's continue on with how the system works. Uh, the system, as we said before, uses a unique 50 hertz input switching process to determine the sensor input status. So the barrier switches the polarity of its inputs at a 50 hertz rate from plus to minus and then back to minus to plus again. In this example, for every positive transition of the square wave that we've got highlighted here in green, the blocking diodes in either the Nemour sensor or a sensor adapter only allow signal flow through one sensor at a time. And in this case, 
sensor number one is the active sensor and will operate relay number one. So after switching the input polarity for every negative transition of the representation square wave highlighted here in green, the blocking diodes in either the Nemours sensor or a sensor adapter will only allow signal flow through one sensor at a time, just like on the previous slide. And in this case, sensor number two is active and the uh, sensor will operate relay number two. And we need to note here that outputs one and two and outputs three and four share a common. All right, let's go over the hardware requirements. The system requires two wire sensors, Nemur, using built-in reverse polarity protection. And the Nemur sensors must have a switching frequency greater than 500 hertz. The devices can't be wired in parallel. And you'll need the switch amplifier that has the 2-in-1 technology built in, obviously. And I also have some of the highlights of the barrier that are on the data sheet off to the right of the image. So in the absence of built-in reverse polarity protection, or if you have a dry contact, we have terminal modules available to connect the device to the 2-in-1 barrier. So to use the 2-in-1 uh, technology, we have equipment installed in a safe area and the hazardous area. So let's split this up a bit and take a look at what's installed in the safe area. In the control cabinet, the 2-to-1 barrier is installed either on a DIN rail or a DIN rail with the Pepperell and Fuchs K-System power rail. And this power rail will allow you to have uh, barrier power and the lead breakage and short circuit indication brought out so that you can uh, distribute it over all the K-System uh, barriers on that rail. The barrier allows four inputs to operate one of four Formay output relays. Each input pair is going to share a common on the output relay like we spoke about before. So one and two share a common and three and four share a common. A configuration dip switches allow different functionality of inputs and outputs and we'll see that in a minute. And the barrier is equipped with line fault detection that warns of a lead breakage or a short circuit. So let's go ahead and take a look at the barrier and it is equipped with individual sensor status LEDs that you can find there, a power status LED, and there's a line fault detection uh, flashing sequence that comes along with that if you get a lead breakage or short circuit. Now with the dip switches, you can configure two to one or normal intrinsic safety barrier operation. You can select normally open or normally closed relay per channel. You can select whether you want the lead breakage and the short circuit monitoring or not. And the barrier has removable terminals for the inputs and the outputs. And this can be installed on a standard K-System power rail or just a regular DIN rail. The uh, K-System power rail provides power to all the barriers on the DIN rail and a single fault detection output for the whole rail. So what if we don't have a Nemours sensor with the built-in blocking diodes? Well, in this case, uh, where the device is not two-in-one equipped, Pepperell and Fuchs offers pre-assembled diode networks that you can use. These are uh, F-KD adapters, and they're available for just normal Nemur sensors or dry contacts. So there are two types of adapters. The F-KD-EX2 adapter is mounted in the hazardous area. And this model adapts the Nemours sensor line 
to the two in one barrier by providing the blocking diode network if it's not equipped. And it is recommended to install this device in an enclosure as the protection class is IP20. So the F-KDR-EX2 adapter, it's functionally the same as the F-KD-EX2 adapter, except that it will adapt two dry contact devices to the two to one barrier. As with the Namur adapter, the device is mounted in the hazardous area. And like I said, this model adapts dry contact devices to the two in one barrier by providing that blocking diode network. And it's also recommended to install this device in an enclosure also as it is only IP20. So the wiring is pretty straightforward on the barrier. Uh, the inputs are wired to the adapter, whether those come from a uh, dry contact, a uh, Nemours sensor without the blocking diodes, that type of thing. Anything that runs through the adapter we're going to show on the diagram now. So let's put our representation of the wires from the field to the adapter up here. So then the adapter is wired to the barrier with just the two wires. And then the outputs are picked up on terminal 7 through 12. And as we discussed a little earlier, the form A relay outputs share a common between output 1 and 2 and output 3 and 4. So what are some good applications for 2 to 1? Uh, well, anywhere cable density is an issue and the device connected to the barrier has dry contact outputs or a Nemur application. So valve sensors are probably a great place for two to one as there are two outputs in a single valve sensor. Areas with multiple Nemur sensors close together would be a good spot for this. Mechanical contact devices like a pressure switch or a pressure switch array. You'll find this in older or standalone type systems uh, in a high or low for monitoring or alarms and emergency high and low pressure switches to provide backup control of a process. Float switches for level control is another good one. There will typically be more than one in an application. This can include a tank or boiler level switch similar to the picture we've got here or a sump or tank level control system. And good old traditional mechanical limit switches. These can include the roller, feeler, button switches, any type. These are just a few. You know, just think of anywhere multiple inputs are required that are Nemur or dry contacts. The intent with this system is to reduce the amount of cable required on a project. That's all we have for this video. I hope it was helpful for you. Any questions about this or any of Pepperell and Fuchs products can be answered by contacting our tech support group at Pepperell and Fuchs 330-486-001 and press 2 for tech support. And thank you much for watching and have a great day.